Game Ranks presents 10 of the biggest game worlds of 2015. Listen, we got a lot of ground to cover. I'm sorry. Uh, so let's get started off with number 10. The World of Dying Light is very big. Unfortunately, it's one of the games on our list that we couldn't really get a good approximation, but it's two areas with big chunks with large stretches of places to explore. There's cities, there's huts, there's beaches, there's bridges, there's towering apartment tenements, there's big train yards, there's bazaars, courtyard market squares. The game world is absolutely huge with lots of interiors to explore, and maybe it just feels so big because you have to constantly run everywhere on foot. Despite that, it's a compelling and awesome and pretty big game world. And speaking of compelling, at number 9 we have Assassin's Creed Syndicate's game world. This Victorian mid-19th century London is 1.28 square miles, and it is dense as hell. And the coolest part is that every section of the map and every neighborhood has a completely different feel. This is one of the biggest Assassin's Creed cities horizontally and vertically, and you can tell because they give you a grappling hook to get around, because the world is just that big. You need to move faster than just climbing everywhere. Not to mention the fact that you can hop on a horse and carriage and ride through streets for what seems like hours. It feels like a real and accurate London, if I was in London in the mid-1800s. But I wasn't, and I have no idea, but it's a pretty big game world. And since we're on the topic of dark and gritty game worlds, let's talk about Batman Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight's version of Gotham City is approximately two square miles. Personally, I thought it was gonna be a bit larger than that, but maybe it's just in how densely packed the map really is. There's multiple different islands which you can glide completely across or drive around on the ground with your Batmobile. That's probably why this is one of the bigger Arkham game worlds, just because the game world needs to account for driving around in your Batmobile. That being said, it is definitely one of the more dense game worlds on our list because that Gotham City is packed to the gills with buildings, stuff, people to punch, things to find, and stuff to crash through with your Batmobile. And at number 7 we have Fallout 4 with a game world about 9.33 square miles. This game world is unquestionably bigger and more open than Fallout 3, but not quite as big as Skyrim's. That being said, the world of Fallout 4 feels absolutely huge, you walk around everywhere on foot so everything feels vastly stretched out, but at the same time, the map is just so packed with stuff to find. You can wander through a spooky dead looking woods and think it's just an area where the game developers just totally forgot about, but then you'll stumble across a shack with some treasure or a hidden secret. And that's what makes Fallout 4 special, and it makes it feel like just such a bigger game world, because it takes you so long to get across from one section to the next. Not just because it's so big, but because there are so many distractions along the way. And at number 6, we have the game worlds of Metal Gear Solid 5. Metal Gear Solid 5 has two open world stealth playgrounds, including Afghanistan, that is 6.18 square miles, and Africa, which we've approximated between 7 and 9 square miles. These game worlds are absolutely huge, and while there are long stretches where there isn't anything, there are plenty of secret bases hidden around to find, infiltrate, or blow up. I'd say for a first open world Metal Gear game, they did a pretty good job, and the map size definitely accounts for the fact that you can drive vehicles or ride horses anywhere you want. Traveling from one base to the next in Afghanistan is especially awesome. That being said, the size might seem a little smaller just because there are so many mountain ranges that you can't cross. But traveling through them via canyons on foot or on horse or in a jeep is really, really cool and feels like a real journey. And at number five, we have The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 game world is absolutely huge. I'd say almost mind bogglingly huge just because this game has so much to do. The Witcher 3 clocks in at about 52 square miles and every inch of it is completely varied. There's creepy swamps, there's beautiful forests, there's snowy mountain ranges, giant wastelands, long stretches of farmland, and basically every other type of terrain you can think of. Not to mention the fact that every inch of that game world is completely gorgeous and lit with an amazing lighting system, beautiful sunsets, sunrises, and weather effects. Game worlds don't get much better than The Witcher 3, that's why it's on our list. And speaking of game worlds that don't get much better than this, it's not as good of a game world, but it's certainly bigger, the world of the new Need for Speed. It clocks in at about 98.6 square miles, full of streets to street race through, and those streets are always dark and rainy and, you know, typical Need for Speed stuff. We put it on our list because it is a very big game world, and it's much, much bigger than Need for Speed Most Wanted. That being said, this game world, there isn't the most to do, but it is a compelling place to drive around in. And at number three, we have the Wasteland of Mad Max. We couldn't get an exact number on the square mileage of the Mad Max world, but we kind of feel like it's about as big as Just Cause 2. So if you play Just Cause 2, you know that it's really, really big. The cool part about Mad Max's world is that it's just very special. It feels so much like the Mad Max movies in that it's just an open world apocalyptic wasteland with vast stretches of dead area. But that's what makes it special, since in this game your primary mode of transportation is a car, so the game world accounts for that. You're driving in a car and you're driving through areas, you gotta feel like you're driving for more than 30 seconds to get somewhere. And Mad Max does a great job at that because it feels like you're seriously driving through a desert. Sometimes it even gets a little lonely, which I feel like it would if you were Mad Max, and that's awesome. And at number two, we have the Wii U exclusive JRPG Xenoblade Chronicles X, clocking in at about 248 square miles. You explore the planet Mira and the established human city of New 
new Los Angeles, and this game is absolutely huge, not only in its size and distance, but also its verticality. The original Xenoblade already had a huge game world, but this time around, they just ripped it open and turned it up to 11. There are many people out there who have completed the entire main game, but have not seen everything that Mira has to offer. That's impressive. That's a huge world. I almost get overwhelmed and nauseous just thinking about it. And at number one, the biggest game world that we had this year, Just Cause 3, clocking in at 400 square miles. Yeah, Just Cause 3 is absolutely freaking huge, and for good reason. There's lots of flying, parachuting, jumping off of airplanes, flying around on jets, helicopters. There's just so much to do in this game that the game world needs to be huge to contain it all. Not to mention the fact that it's huge, but it's also, like Witcher 3, a very varied landscape. There's snowy peaks, Mediterranean villages, ocean-like vistas, forests and mountains, and tropical islands. The game has a full weather system, highways, and even a train system going around on train tracks that you can completely derail, of course, and blow everything up. Just Cause 3 is so big because not only is the land absolutely huge, but the skybox is huge as well. You can fly up so high, see the entire world, and skydive wingsuit and parachute your way all the way down. That's what makes it freaking insanely big. And that's why it's on our list. Just Cause 3 is disgustingly big. So guys, those were the biggest game worlds from 2015. We picked out the ones that we thought were the best and biggest, but we want to hear from you guys since there's been so many open world games this year. What are some of your favorite open world games? Even if they're not the biggest, let's talk about it. What are your favorites? If you did have a good time with this video, helping us out the best way you can is clicking the like button. We really appreciate it though, seriously. And if you're new, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.